Hello. In the first video I posted on this channel, I, I talked about using count as the wrong way to create multiple resources in Terraform. And I demonstrated that whilst it might appear good in the first instance, as soon as you change uh, the indices, then um, you basically have to destroy and recreate resources. So the right way of doing it is for each, as we all probably know, but there's a right and a wrong way of using for each. I've been bitten by this in the modules that I write. I had a problem in the landing zone vending module with this exact pattern I'm going to show you now. And it's really easy to stumble into it and actually quite difficult to get out of it without breaking changes. So let's have a look at this really simple example to get us going. We have a map of objects. So map key foo, uh, the map value is an object with an attribute with a string. And we've got the same with bar. So we've got foo with an attribute foo one, bar with an attribute bar one. If we look at this resource, it's a map. It's a Terraform data resource. It's a really good one for running demos. And we're for eaching over that map of objects. Now, in reality, this would probably be an input variable instead of a local, but for the purposes of this, I'm just making it a local because it's easier. So we've got the input to the Terraform data. And the name is set to the map key, foo and bar in this case, and the attribute is set to the attribute value. So let's see what happens. Let's just go straight from apply. It says, oh, right, I'm going to create two resources. Uh, Terraform data map of objects bar and Terraform data map of objects foo. And it's, the name is going to be the key and the attribute is the value. Yeah, perfect. Let's do that. Done. No problem. In the real world, however, this name here might be coming from data which is outside of this module. It might indeed be not known until we've applied it. This is typical for um, lots of scenarios where you might want to create a dependent resource first and then use its name in something else. So for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to create a random pet name to simulate something which isn't known until after apply. So I've got a quick random pet name and I've got a quick for each on that and I've just called it foo and bar. So if we apply that, you'll see it's going to create the pet names. Cool. So we've got harmless swine and mint terrapin. Cool. So what we do now is we'd go random pet dot name and then foo dot ID. Now, because this is a reference, we have to put it in brackets. So if I just copy that and put that here, this is simulating something where we want the name of the object. So in this case, the map key. Uh, and we don't know that till after apply because uh, it's based on something that is generated by this resource. So let's run Terraform apply. Cool. Okay. So that's going to delete our original ones, which is fine because we changed the map keys. And it's going to create two new Terraform data resources. We've got harmless swine and mint terrapin names. Cool. So actually, what's the problem doing that, that work? Let me show you the problem. And this is something that you must always do when you're developing Terraform modules. Let's destroy it. Now let's apply it. Bang, right? <laughs> this is a problem. The for each map includes keys derived from resource attributes that cannot be determined until apply. And so Terraform cannot determine the full set of keys that will identify the resources it's going to create. So basically, it doesn't know what resources it's going to have to create. Now, this is the bit. <laughs> this is the bit that should be in neon lights on the Terraform documentation website. When working with unknown values in for each, it is better to define the map keys statically in your configuration and place apply time results only in the map values. So how do we do that? We realize that this is wrong and now we've broken it. The only way we can do it is by changing the input schema here, not here, here. Name. Uh, is well, let's put that in there actually name is that but i'm going to have to define this statically go so what that's done is i've used a static set of map keys that i already know about and i'm putting the stuff that isn't known until after apply into the attributes. Now this is fine as long as I change this to each 
dot value dot name. So let's run that. Let's clear it. Cool. That's going to work exactly right. Done. So when you create your modules, always, always, always use a map key that is statically defined as part of the input. Don't place any data uh, inside those map keys. Don't generate the map keys from anything that isn't going to be known to Terraform. It may seem more cumbersome, and, and it is more cumbersome, because this map key sounds like the ideal thing to use for the name of the resource. But don't do it. You'll fall into this trap eventually, and you will be sad because you'll have to make changes to your modules, which may be breaking. So I hope that makes sense. The link to the module repo uh, will be in the description. And uh, yeah, I also link to the other the first video I created as well. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that. See you next time.